Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. Today we're going to be doing load switching and we're going to be focusing our attention on high side switching. That's where the switching component is going to be on the high side of the positive voltage and the load is going to be on the low side. So we're going to start today. We have a 12 volt battery, very common in the automotive world, and we have a 100 ohm resistor that's going to be our test resistor. So if we run this simulation, we should expect that 120 milliamps of current are going to be passing through this resistor. Here's the voltage at 12 volts and here's the current at 120 milliamps. So that's great. Um, we, we have current flow in a clockwise direction through this resistor, but what if, uh, what if we wanted this load to be actuated or to be on only under certain conditions? Well, we would start to switch it and turn it on or off depending on various things. Could be temperature related, could be pressure related. It all depends on how the application might be working. Now, in order to do this, in order to switch, we're going to look at this from a idealized perspective by having more ideal components, and we're going to start using the voltage, uh, voltage operated control uh, for this switch. So we're going to place it in our circuit, connected, and we're going to do this as well. And now, actually, I'm going to switch this around at first, but then we'll move it back to what that is actually. Make sure the positive is up. For now, okay, we put the the minus here to ground, and then we can start modulating the solenoid portion of this. I would expect that uh, I would expect that if I don't apply any signal here, meaning it's like ground here, that uh, there would be no current that's passing through this resistor, and that this switch is off as it's shown symbolically. The analysis of that. Okay, it's in microamps of current. So because of uh, the nature of our circuit and the loads that we've chosen, the voltages that we've chosen, that microamps is effectively off for what we're trying to do. Now there are various ways that you can modulate that or change that if you want to. Uh, on state resistance means essentially the resistance of it being uh, being a pathway between the two terminals and this should be as low as possible. Uh, really good uh, resistors uh, for this kinds of purpose um, are very low resistance. They're milliohms or, or you know maybe even two you know this right here is two milliohms. Uh, we can go lower than that depending on what we're trying to do but uh, and then very in the off state it's going to be very high resistance or high impedance and six mega ohms is pretty realistic. Uh, for most MOSFETs um, in how they operate. And if we want to turn this system back on, we're going to apply a voltage of it of around 5 volts to it. And now we would expect that this is enough to start to, to exchange the resistance states from the, the low, um, from, the, uh, from the high impedance state to the low impedance state. And so that should allow around 120 milliamps of current again from the beginning portion of our circuit. So we see that. Very good. Okay, now um, what what is somewhat different or somewhat uh, squirrely about p-channel devices is that the voltage is um, somewhat opposite, and uh, that that can be kind of difficult to um, to to understand at 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 the outright. So p-mos here, you actually put the the p-channel with the source up, and it's best if you choose a real device and not a generic device, otherwise it might not work the way that you expect it to. But you have the source and the gate. And unlike n-channel devices, um, you are looking for a negative difference of the gate and the source. So the voltage between here and here has to be negative. So if I put a ground here in the way that we had done with the ideal switch, is that this will actually make this off because, um, or on rather, it's going to turn it on rather than the opposite because now there's a difference between the gate and the source and that gate is negative because the gate, zero volts minus 12 volts is going to give us minus 12 volts, and this is going to turn on. So let's run that simulation just to make sure that that's how it's actually working. You can see it's a, nearly 120 milliamps, and it's kind of jumping around. Uh, this is because the the window, the viewing window, is basically 120 milliamps to 120 milliamps, and we're seeing small perturbations between that, maybe in the nanoamp range. And if we were concerned about this in a health application, like let's say a pacemaker, or uh, let's say it's a very a uh, very sensitive instrument um, that we are we are measuring, then maybe we start to care about how e the model is going to be performing and all of the parameters associated with it. So if we really care about those kinds of sensitivities, we're going to be looking at all of these parameters, and we may even span this across the level of model, uh, depending on what we're trying to look at or trying to um, 
uh, trying to understand better. So the, the P channel works opposite the way that you think it does when you put a, a gate voltage here. In order to, to turn it on, you have to put it to zero. If you want to turn it off, then you have to you have to match the voltage between these two places. So like that. So we would expect that this would be off if we do that. Right, and it is. Again, these are the perturbations, but if you look at nano amps effectively off, and then we have essentially pico amp fluctuation. Okay, so this the point is still proved. All right, so then now let's take a look at how we might do this from a switched perspective or from a pulse perspective. Now, um, because this is we have this P channel which performs opposite to the way that we would expect, we're going to put the 10 volts on the on the V1 side, and we're going to put the zero volts on the V2 side this time. If we were to do an N channel, we would we would do the opposite here. But here we have a delay characteristic. This tells us when this pulse is going to to um, uh, to become real, and then we have a rising characteristic and a falling characteristic. And I like to I like to change these to slightly higher values because it shows us uh, what's happening at the edge, and we'll talk more about that. But we have the pulse width, length, and we have the period. So if the period is one microsecond, the pulse width is going to be 400 nanoseconds into that, and there are 600 nanoseconds of nothing um, or on. Right? It's going to be 600 nanoseconds of 10 volts, and it's going to be 400 nanoseconds of zero volts. And we hit OK. Great. We wire it up, and this is a reference that we can use in our graphing if we want to. We're going to add in, it's going to be 2, we're going to add in gate and V. Now, I'm not sure if I, I'm going to just double check here, yeah, I need to be able to label this as gate in order for us to measure it in the first place. Okay, we run this. There we go. Uh, but it, it'd probably be easier if we switch these two. So if I put this to three and this to two. Okay, there we go. So you can see that the voltage is at 10 volts and it's being switched to zero volts, but yet the current is actually performing in the opposite direction. It's starting at zero milliamps and it's turning on into its on state and allowing current into, uh, into that resistor. So just keep in mind the p-channels um, work by using a, a, a opposite gate signal um, in their performance. So uh, also the other thing is that you can change the line thickness. This is just more of a stylistic kind of thing, but if uh, if it's easier for you to view it, you can move the width to two, and maybe this line shows up a little bit bolder. So if you like me doing simulations with this more bold uh, line width, or if you want it even bolder, just let me know in the comment section because then. Uh, I want you to be able to see it better and for the simulation to help you more. So just let me know. Uh, but how you do that is you go into limits and then you go into properties and then you can look down to the different components and go to plot all and you can change that to maybe three or two or something like that. And uh, now, now it looks like that. So that's really it for high side switching with uh, p-channel implementations. Um, p-channels generally cost more uh, so you'll see a lot of low side switching occur more often. And, uh, and you may do high side switching and low side switching at the same time. And we'll talk about that in another video.